Then we have Breaking Bridget. The hijab. Christiane Amanpour was supposed to have an interview with the president of Iran, and he didn't show because she wouldn't wear a headscarf. Yeah, really what bothers me about this is that the screams from journalists in Iran or people who cover Iran and women in Iran who are like, where's the West? Where are the Western feminists? And we've covered this in our podcast many times, just how if you come out and say, hey, why are we supporting the hijab in so many instances where we're saying it's Islamophobic to push back against it? When this is an actual symbol of oppression, these women do not have a choice about whether or not they want to wear it. Good for women who choose to wear it. They can they can also and because the, it's hard because in places like France, they'll be bullied by racists who for wearing it. So it's a different it's uh, this. I, I don't know. My name is Masih Ali Nishan. I'm an Iranian journalist, women's rights activist, campaigner against compulsory hijab. I make this video for all those female politicians from the Western countries who ignored us for years and years. Western feminists fail in this regard in that they will not speak up because they're too worried about being Islamophobic when this is a real situation where there are so many women being oppressed. And this is that symbol of oppression. It gets put on them when they're little girls. They don't have a choice. They're told, basically, you are either a a slutty, gross person or you'll be allowed into heaven. That's not a choice. I've been telling you about the dangers of hijab police. I've been sharing a lot of videos of Iranian women getting bitten up by morality police. You ignored millions of Iranian women inside the country who are right now removing their hijab and facing guns and bullets. You celebrated hijab day. Now it's your turn to mourn for Mahsa Amini and show your solidarity with Iranian women. Because for millions of Iranian, Mahsa's brutal death became a turning point. Obviously, a woman was murdered for having like a couple of strands of hair showing. And where is the West? It's your time to take action. If you don't get united to end Islamic terror, believe me, the terrorist they will get united and they end you and democracy. Where are the Western leaders? And these Western leaders who have real power, women will often put on a headscarf when they're interviewing the leader of Iran. Mm-hmm. And Christiane Amanpour, because she's a badass, was like, no, I'm not going to do that. And I very politely declined on behalf of myself and CNN and female journalists everywhere. And so he wouldn't sit down with her. Well, I mean, the protesters are burning their hijabs. That's part of their protest is what they're doing is they're taking them off and burning them. And they will they could be beat and arrested for doing that. Yeah. It's weird to me when I see the images of like these women burning their hijabs and then like Nike or whatever trying to like make it sexy, this mm-hmm. like sexy symbol because we're so inclusive and it's it's fed up. Mm-hmm. It's 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 not right. Until the hijab is a choice for everyone, it shouldn't be seen as some symbol of freedom. It's just not fair, and it undermines their whole entire cause. Walkins Welcome, the, ep- the Yasmin Muhammad episode, uh, she talks about it and her book Unveiled. If you want to learn more about it and how you know actual women who've suffered under this oppression feel about it. But they got they get ostracized by the left, too. Exactly. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Her West, story's crazy. It's like Ayan Hirsi Ali. Ayan should be freaking... Feminist icon. These women should be feminist icons and they get ostracized because they're saying that there's some danger in Islam and that you need to root it out and they're Islamophobic. These are women who have suffered under these structures, patriarchies and hierarchies and they're, they have women who are drinking their fucking Starbucks being like, actually, you're Islamophobic. It's insane it makes me crazy yeah it breaks me it makes me fucking crazy i mean look at pictures of the middle How, east back in the 60s yeah and what women were wearing yeah they looked like just chicks in the 70s yeah it's it's it doesn't take long they're showing their hair they can wear a tank top it's they're such wearing- a 
fucking parody. And for all of the talk about privilege, like you have the ultimate privilege. There's no woman who's more free than a Western woman at this time and place in the history. And you can say, oh, Roe v. Wade and all these things and push back. But we are not living in, in anywhere near the kind of system that these women are bucking against and fighting for right now. And to sit there and put your handmaid's tail costume on and act like you are living under the same kind of oppression, like some people will actually have the audacity. They will come into the mentions of Iranian women who are who are pushing the videos out and trying to show what's going on. And they'll be like, yeah, it's exactly like the ethno Christian fascist in America. No, it's not. You in lunatic and you narcissist for making this about you. This is not about you. And this is not anywhere remotely near the same situation. Get a fucking grip and go read some history or go volunteer or do something or anything other than try and envision how your life is the most problematic. I beg you. Listen to something outside of your like liberal orthodoxy that somehow makes all of these things the same when they're not at all the same in any in any normal world we should be fighting for for them okay i guess i did have a lot to say about that it's exactly like the ethno fascist christian state that i live in tennessee anyone want to go get a latte like go you are a <laughs> parody of uh, an ally